Hi, my name is Scott Chamberlain. This is the first of the Journal of Ecology interview series in which we have conversations with scientists about the research. Check out our interviews here on the blog or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Journal of Ecology. I recently caught up with Dr. David Padilla, who has an early view paper in Journal of Ecology on secondary dispersal. What is secondary dispersal? Here's a quick definition before we get into it with David. It is a movement of seeds following initial or primary dispersal. Ants do it, rodents do it, as well as birds, dung beetles, and wind and water. What was your main question? Okay, yeah, yeah. Our group, for a long time, uh, our research group, led by Dr. Nogales, have been studying different seed dispersal processes for the submelon in, in island ecosystem. Right? These yeah. oceanic islands are very interesting and ideal place to to develop this this kind of ecology and evolutionary processes because of their relatively simply simplicity of in terms of the species biodiversity. Mainly that's because uh, not all the species that are in the continent could colonize the islands. No? Right. So in the Canary Islands, our research group have been uh, studied how endemic lizards, you know, the frugivorous lizards of genus Galotia that I told you before, could disperse a lot of different fresh fruit and species. But, and these lizards uh, undergo another island phenomenon that it's called density compensation, you know, where they can reach extreme, extremely high densities as a consequence of the lower predation and competition that they suffer in the island. So, Due to this high density in the islands, in the Canary Islands, there are few predators that on the islands that have a superabundance of prey results, with lizard being the main prey that uh, okay. they eat. So, our main question was, if the lizard eats a lot of different fruits, and there are some predatory birds that eat the lizard, what happened with the seeds that are inside the lizard when the predation occurs. And after that, could the seeds survive to a double digestion process? And also, could happen a long distance seed dispersal process carry on by predator? That was where our main, where our main question. If you could boil down um, your findings in this paper to uh, you know, a couple of sentences, what, what, what would you say about about the take-home message from this study? Well, uh, I think this, this study <coughs> gives new purpose, perspective about how long distance seed dispersal process could be regular and generalized, right? and how this could be an important system that could help to understand colonization patterns and a spread of plant population. Normally, long Distant seed dispersal processes are considered very rare and very scholastic events and not mm -hmm. regular and generalized how we detect in this process. I think this is the main the main uh, conclusion of this, this process, you know, that some long distance seed dispersal processes could be regular and generalized and could uh, happen year after year. This system has been studied for, for quite a while, this, uh, this archipelago. Um, yeah. And so, what, like, when when did when was it first uh, noticed on these islands that uh, that this secondary dispersal might be going on? Was it twenty years ago, five years ago? Like, when when did this observation happen? Yeah. Well, the the first the first um, view of this process was in a, in a little islet in the in the north of Lanzarote Island mm -hmm. in nineteen ninety eight when. Uh, our lead, Dr. Nogales, saw in some uh, strike pellets uh, sit inside inside the, the pellet. Okay. So uh, we we thought, and he thought that uh, was a strange, no, because we never saw the saw the, uh, this predator eating directly from the fruit. So when we analyzed the the different pellets of the strike and the custard, we thought that practically all the seeds were. Uh, were with uh, inside the pellet were with lizard remains inside them. So okay. we we thought that was uh, a, a consequence of a secondary seed dispersal. Okay. And was the first uh, uh, paper published of of this process was in 1998. Yeah. It sounds like the the kestrels are larger than the shrikes, right? 
And so do they, they can eat larger lizards than the shrikes? But do you know if they have a, if the two different bird species differ in their preferences? Is it just, do you, do you just assume they prefer larger lizards? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in a previous, in a previous study uh, from, we, we analyzed how did, uh, how, in a previous study we analyzed how the, uh, the different uh, predators, the, the strike and the custard, mm -hmm. um, how they, uh, uh, the prey selection of post predatory birds. Um, upon when they prey upon the lizard, so we found how the kestrel have preference for larger lizards than than the shrike, and the shrike prefer the smaller the smaller ones. This seems to be uh, considerable 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 uh, consequence because uh, of the restriction of of the small lizard that uh, to swallow. Big, big fruit or, or seed, no? So it's, it sounds like there's this um, connection with body size here where the kestrels can, can fly farther distances and they can also eat larger lizards and, the, and those can eat larger lizards, can eat larger seeds and or fruit. So, so um, are you worried at all or, or is there any concern, should there be any concern for um, body size biased you know, extirpation and extinction. I mean, I don't, I don't know if, d if that, does that happen in birds? Um, you know, um, would you be worried about that? Yeah, about, about, uh, yeah, I think it's, it has uh, important, important uh, implication for, for even for, for conservation, uh, in a conservation point of view. No? Normally, people tend to conserve independently endangered species without taking into account the the other species that are interacting with with them this and this work show how important are the most mutualistic interaction no? and mm -hmm. how the loss of or the decrease of some species such as the lizard or the secondary dispersant could have drastic consequences for many plant species that are being dispersed by, by them what do you think was the most challenging part of the study well, <coughs> the free world was really exciting, exciting, but uh, yeah. really hard. You know, the, yeah. uh, that's because uh, many times we have to climb to the bird perches and sample all the island and habitat was really hard to land it in the whole archipelago. And this took many years for to, to have a good idea of the importance of this of this right. process in the in the island. You know? And finally, but finally, it was really nice. And also, the analysis of the huge amount of of pellets and dropping to detect the seed dispersion yeah. was also really hard. You no, know? and we need yeah. the help of some college and technicians during this tedious uh, work that we are, that was very helpful. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thinking about the general field of uh, seed dispersal ecology and, <coughs> and uh, beyond your paper. What do you think are the what do you think are the consequences for the, the field? You sort of said the, the main take-home message, and, and uh, but what do you think uh, people in the field are going to do after reading this paper? Do you know, do you, how do you think it will? You think yeah, people will think, think more about secondary dispersal now? Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. I think it could be a new step, not to investigate and to to analyze all the archipelagos or all the islands, or even even in in. Some uh, some part of the continent that could act as 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 island, no? like uh, a special part in that uh, different uh, reptile, frugivorous reptile could act, and and I think it's it's a uh, we open a new a new door to to investigate new things in uh, around the world, no? and could be could be interesting to see if this process this process appear more often that we, we, we thought in a, in a previous step, you know, in, in different archipelagos. Right. We know that that, seen, that there are some, some previous studies that uh, uh, describe that, uh, a little bit uh, this, this process, for example, in the Galapagos Island with, with the finches, with the Darwin finches, when, when some owls the prey, or prey upon the finches and in, in some pellets appear, appear, mm. appear some seeds. That, Probably this is 
uh, as a consequence of a secondary seed dispersal. No? So that was described by by Grant, but only in a few few sentences. So there are, I think, there are uh, good options to analyze and to uh, study this this kind of study in other archipelagos and and also in other part of of the continent. Yeah. Where are you going to go from here? I change a little bit the yeah. uh, research line now, and yeah. uh, now I'm I'm a study. I continue to study birds, but uh -huh. uh, I now in the in the United Kingdom in in, in Norwich in the University of East Anglia, and now I am going to study um, the parasite, the blood parasites in, in different birds of of the Canary Islands in different habitats and how they change. Uh, so, but I don't discard that. That uh, I will, I will continue with this process in in the future. Huh?